Hi there, and thank you for tuning in to Artist Corner, where we have a special segment in store for you today. I'm here with pop sensation and diva Kanisha K, who has been burning up the charts recently with hits like I've Got a Stupid Boyfriend and Oh Damn Yeah. How are you doing, Kanisha? I'm doing great, thanks. All right, so with such an impressionable time in the industry already, tell us more about your upbringing and how that played a role in your musical success. Um, growing up, I definitely had a massive um, view into the music. You know, my dad loved rock, jazz, everything. So for us growing up, it was kind of like, well, what do you like? What would you like to play? What would you like to do? Um, they were very supportive in everything we did. So I played, you know, piano, guitar, saxophone, and then I just kind of landed in singing. So they were very supportive, but having... Um, all that music in the house was so great because I was just exposed to all the genres and I think that's why I'm so versatile. Excellent. You definitely have an earthy and an alternative vibe to your music. So what was your favorite instrument growing up? <laughs> you know, I like the saxophone, but um, right now I can still play piano. Um, I don't really read the music so much anymore, but I still write on piano, so I just play everything by ear now. and. Um, so it's definitely stuck with me. I started playing in first grade, I think. Looking back, I wish I would have stuck with it because, you know, I had three years of piano under my belt. So if I would have stuck with it, I would be killing it today. You know, Alicia Keys, but <laughs> I just, you know, stopped and just sang. So that's okay, too. Absolutely. Well, you seem to be doing very well so far. In any case, tell us more about who Kanisha is and what inspired you to really start gaining traction in the music arena? Um, I would say for me, everything I do is like 200%. So when I decided to sing, um, that's where it really took off for me and I knew what I wanted to do. So going in the studio, I worked really hard. Um, I'm, I'm outgoing, um, I like to have fun, but I like to work at the same time. So um, singing music is definitely all those emotions. So it was great for me to be in the studio and have producers pull that out of me, but we still had fun. So I think that's why I've stuck with it is because I always manage to have fun in the studio. Excellent, when you're in an environment where you can work and play at the same time, that is a win-win situation. So growing up in Holland, Michigan, what was that like? <laughs> um, it's a small town, but not too small. Um, it's a beach town, so in the summertime, we have Lake Michigan. It's like two minutes from my house, which is amazing. Safe area to grow up. Um, I like the small town. I go to LA, New York, Nashville, here, and you know, I go home and it's a different world. But I think that's good sometimes. So I really appreciate growing up in a small town, and it was fun, and it was just a good time. I was very lucky to be a kid in that area. Having a place to escape to every now and then is really, really healthy for, for your career. With that said, what are some of the genres that you would say are incorporated into your style of music? Because I know you've got some jazz here and some bluesy sound to you, but what is all included in that mix? You know, I think it really depends on the project because, you know, I did some pop, I did um, some more R&B. This has got, you know, oh damn yeah, has a tad bit of country in it. And I never thought in a million years I'd have that. It's not really my genre, but I think when you feel the song, you feel the music, and it, it just takes over you, and whatever comes out, comes out, and usually that's the best because it's not planned. It's not something you can sit down and say, this is what it needs to be. It's really what, um, you know, just comes out, and I think that's what makes an artist is someone that just allows themselves to do what they need to do and not think about it too much. So it's kind of hard to say genre-wise, but I like to think that I'm, um, I would say rock, pop, R&B a little bit. Um, those would be the three that I would definitely say to people if they ask me. Some of your musical inspirations include Etta James, Josh Stone, Alicia Keys. As far as people you want to collaborate with, who would you name in the industry? Um, I love Steven Tyler. I envy his voice. I love that he can scream, and I just love that raw, that raw voice. 
Um, I would love to collaborate with him. Um, I'm actually incorporating Sweet Emotion, one of his songs, in one of my upcoming shows. So I'm very excited. Um, I would love to do a song with Alicia or Joss. I love Joss's style. Um, I feel like she's very organic, and I like that. I like that. I feel like that's what the industry is missing. So to be with somebody like her in the studio would be great because I am a bit younger, so I could bring that to the table, I think. The inspiration behind my music is definitely based on the producer a little bit. I think um, I've been lucky to have producers that listen to me, and they've been able to allow me to create with them. So inspiration kind of comes from just me being there, listening, having an input. So for me, that kind of inspiration happens. Um, and I'm lucky that I can spend the time in the studio and I can listen to different musics and say, hey, you know, I heard the song on the radio the other day. I loved the synth bass. Can we incorporate that in my song? And we recently have. So it's just great that I work with people like that. Um, Jason Miles was one of the first producers, I think, that um, really let me just go, go with it. You know, I went in the studio and he's like, okay, sing this line. And I'm just like, is there a direction you want me to go or what? He's like, no, just sing it how you feel it. And I actually, you know, my biggest accom accomplishment thus far was the HMMA award, and that was with him. So that was very special because I definitely felt a connection with him. And we won an award for I Got a Stupid Boyfriend, so that was very appropriate. I've seen your music video for One For Me. And I really liked the whole stage and theatrical feel. How does being in that type of platform engaging for you? How does it make you feel? Um, it's quite a rush. Um, I'll tell you, I rehearse, I rehearse a lot, and rehearsal is nothing compared to the real thing. You get out there, it's just kind of go time. You know, you don't think, oh, well, you know, I was going to go over that part of the stage for this part of the song. That's gone. That's, you know, you just have to feel it. Your audience definitely helps with that. And um, it's funny you say that for the music video because that was a time where I hadn't done any of my music live. So that was definitely kind of like live performing because I didn't have any rehearsal at that. Um, so I would say when you're on stage, there is no feeling like it. The adrenaline rush and, you know, you're always a little bit nervous at first, but then once you're done with the show, you're like, yeah, like I killed it. That was so fun. And the crowd was with me. Did you see what they did for this song? So. It's, there's nothing like it. I wouldn't trade it for anything. We're going to take it up a notch. Now we, we got to know you behind the music and how you are with your stage presence and some of the tracks that you've worked on, things like that. But it's time to get a little more personal. So with that said, tell us more about who Kanisha Kate is. What are your interests outside of singing? Um, I really am a homebody. I love to be at home with my family. I value that time quite a bit. I love to watch movies and get into shows with my, you know, my family. I still live at home. Um, my parents are my best friends. So to you know, get into series and stuff like that. Um, I'm a typical girl. I love shoes and purses. So shopping is always the top of the list. But um, I used, I you know, I love sports. I love baseball. I used to play basketball. So I kind of like a little bit of everything. I just am, you know, pretty easygoing, outgoing, and I just like to have fun. I don't like, you know, when I'm not in the studio having to work really hard. I don't take life too serious. I'm very much like laughing, making jokes, and I, I like that because I think when I do go to work, I can be serious. But when I'm in the studio, I think that definitely adds to the atmosphere. I just feel so lucky because, you know, when you start singing and you start getting noticed, you want to be able to do it for a good cause. And I've always loved animals. I wanted to be a veterinarian. We have like six pets at my house and my parents are so sick of it. But, you know, just to be able to do what I love to do and give back, um, the Michigan wolves just got saved from um, being able to be hunted. And I was a part of that. And that just made me feel so good because um, it's my home, you know, my home state, and it was a big problem. So once I did that, and that went well, and we got the law passed, that's when I kind of went to the national level. And I'm looking forward to this year to see what um, I can kind of get involved with. And um, one of my next shows is actually the proceeds are going to the Humane Society, so that's very exciting. And um, I just feel blessed to be able to do what I love and give back to something I just love as much. That is really cool, and I feel like a lot of people don't know about the problem with the Michigan wolves and how important wildlife is in our environment and to, to sustain our community as well. So that's a really interesting thing. Outside of that, 
Growing up in Holland, Michigan, and in addition to being a small town girl, what were some of your interests? And outside of singing, what are some other hobbies and recreations that you enjoyed? Um, being in a small town, I'll tell you, I literally went from basketball 24-7 to singing 24-7. So there wasn't a lot of time for the little hobbies. Um, I was going to play, I, my goal was to play college basketball. And I probably could have done that, but I chose to do singing instead. And um, so it was kind of like switch from one thing to another. And once I switched, it was zero to 100 right away because I got with Robin Robin. So um, I would say hobbies, like I said, just with family and being in a small town, you're close with your friends, you're close with your family, you go to the restaurant and you see all your neighbors and stuff. So that was really cool. But um, yeah, sports were my hobby and now singing's my hobby. I love to write. Um, I love to be at home and just sit in my piano and just see what I come up with. That's definitely something I love to do in my spare time. Excellent. So this was not previously mentioned, but Kanisha does have a very creative side. So going to cosmetology school, how did that creative process filter its way into your singing? Um, well, I was very lucky because, as you know, as a singer, there's a lot of events that you do, a lot of meetings you do, and, um, you know, you, when you do like an album cover or a music video, you have hair and makeup, and I was lucky enough that I had learned to do about, you know, 50% of what they do, so um, because I went to school, I was o always able to look like my album cover or look like the video, so... Um, I was lucky because I'd go places and be like, oh, you actually look like your picture. And I'm like, well, what were you expecting me to look like, you know? So, um, no, I love doing hair. I would do hair, but I love music more. But if I didn't have, you know, the luck in the music, I would do hair for sure. I love it. Well, there you have it, folks. She has the beauty, talent, <laughs> songs, and a very promising career. So lastly, before I let you go. One point that I bet the fans are dying to hear right now is how they can keep up with you and engage with you. How do you do that? Um, I'm on social media, Facebook, I'm on Instagram, Twitter. You can go to my webpage at www.kanishakmusic.com and um, that's updates, all the things I'm doing. Um, it's got all my shows, all the things I'm involved with, and that's really a great place that you can kind of see in there's like a fan list and mailing list. So that's definitely where I'd go, but like Facebook is where you can kind of connect on a more personal level with me, or Reverb Nation's great because I usually put my new music there first. So you check that out, then you can message me, ask me any questions about music. I love to connect with other artists. Oh, and a disclaimer, make sure you check out Bring Me Home in the dance version. You'll dance your socks off. This has been Artist Corner and an exclusive with Kanisha Gay. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Artist Corner, where if you're an artist, we're in your corner. This has been your host, Simone Jameson, and hopefully you just finished watching my exclusive interview with Kanisha Gay, where I indeed have one of her fabulous CDs in my hand. This is self-titled Kanisha Gay, Oh Damn Yeah. Find out how you can win an exclusive copy. Hit us up at Artist Corner Live on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Remember, if you're an artist, we're in your corner.